in power sharing or in really cleaning up the text, uh, tightening the language. Uh, I think in principle, mo most of these items, there's already some kind of a common ground, but we just need to, uh, we are still working on uh, really coming up with a text, a language that will, as usual, mm -hmm. go, di ba? Uh, um, survive all kinds of uh, scrutiny. Mm -hmm. And also to, to, to put together a package that will be very good uh, as far as uh, instituting uh, good yung, uh, autonomous governance in the council. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to agree on the level of detail that will go into the annex. So whether in fact uh, uh, we will have the numbers and the, uh, the schedule Firmly uh, detailed, or at, uh, with a, uh, parang at a certain level of detail in place in the text, or not, that's still uh, part of the items that are being addressed. Mm -hmm. Also, some further clarity on uh, how we actually imagine the process taking place. Mm -hmm. There are several elements involved in normalization uh, uh, the matter of disbandment of private armed groups, uh, uh, socio economic components. Uh, there are several models that we are looking at, uh, and uh, MILF is also clarifying to us um, their own ideas how to um, to undertake uh, the commissioning of weapons and competence side by side with the uh, with the social economic packages, mm -hmm. as well as with other concerns uh, such as redeployment of armed uh, AFP units as soon as. Uh, is an order situation improves in this area. I think the it's really the question of being able to uh, have a common understanding mm -hmm. how things will fall in place all together. We have a uh, we have understanding on core principles, meaning that these things will happen all together. Because of course, security is not only dependent on one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, transformation of uh, an armed force, such as that of the MILF, requires several elements uh, as to ensure, to, to provide them with enough guarantees and confidence that uh, this is the way to go, to transform from an armed group into an armed, an armed group uh, that is active in society and politics of the, the Bangsamoro. So all of these uh, details are being worked out how they will actually complement each other and how they will uh, provide for a very strong program mm -hmm. of uh, normalization. Mm -hmm. The idea is to do this in parallel mm -hmm. and there has to be confidence building on both sides. Uh, I think uh, by the time of the elections in 2016, uh, the way we see it, it's not possible for one group that will participate in elections to still have arms. Mm -hmm. And the assumption is that, of course, all arms, illegal, especially legal arms, are not allowed. Private armed groups are not allowed, uh, especially during election period. So what we we think is a viable approach is to following what we have agreed in the frame of agreement that uh, uh, normalization, the commissioning, shall be gradual in phase. That it cannot simply happen at the tail end of everything. So it's that kind of phasing that we are that we are. Um, looking at uh, gradual and phased mm -hmm. decommissioning, uh, redeployment of armed forces of the Philippine units in the area, as well as the socio-economic programs and then the disbandment of private armed groups. Do you have a timeline for this? A we have a proposed timeline which mm -hmm. we have given to them. Uh, I think they, they, uh, they still have to come to terms also how to do it, mm -hmm. do it as far as their own uh, uh, constituencies are concerned. Mm -hmm. Do it in such a way that uh, uh, organizational integrity is kept in that. Because we, we all know that uh, these matters are very sensitive, mm -hmm. especially to their, uh, uh, to their armed uh, units. What are the lessons from the past that you learned that you are trying to, I guess, correct with this? Uh, One, of course, is that we want to have very clear benchmarks. Uh, we don't want the evaluation process to drag on because we are not very clear as to what our respective commitments are. And that's why we have been very um, 
persistent in asking for uh, very clear uh, numbers and uh, commitments. On our part as well, we are, going, we are ready to provide that and we are expecting also that the MILF be able to provide us with this, uh, uh, this kind of clarity so that uh, when we move on to implementation, we know what we are achieving, we know where the gaps are, we know where we are falling, where, in which aspects we are falling behind and be able to address this so that when we, uh, by 2016, uh, we have a very clear assessment, a common assessment on our respective compliance uh, to the agreements and uh, we'll both be uh, very confident uh, in uh, signing an exit agreement. The idea dito is really to get still get everybody on board uh, mm -hmm. but we know that it's very difficult that people, some groups, some forces will uh, still go the opposite way. Right? But, uh, uh, we have always been guided by the principle that the outcome should really have a space for everyone. So um, if there are special special, uh, special socioeconomic programs that are being designed as part of the normalization component in this process with the MILF, there are similar socioeconomic programs that are, uh, that are available for all the other communities, including MNLF communities mm -hmm. and other ordinary communities that uh, are not conflict affected. So all of these kind of um, approaches are simultaneously being done. Not everything that is going on to produce that uh, stable peace and development in uh, Pangsamoro, not everything is lodged in the table. Uh, there are, as we know, there's a review process with the MNLF. There's a regular armed government still in place, uh, cleaning up the bureaucracy, um, working uh, to make uh, uh, the region attractive for private investments, mm -hmm. as well as also um, strengthening the institutions that uh, will still be the foundation, uh, the initial institutions that will be carried over to the, to the Bank mm -hmm. So we do have a, a um, to say a uh, comprehensive approach uh, to, to, this, uh, to this problem that we are find, we're looking for that kind of uh, sustainable solution mm -hmm. and a very inclusive one as well. In the tripartite review, there are already identified issues that, uh, that are, have been commonly agreed as something that can be improved on, no? weaknesses, perceived weaknesses in the current arm law. And most, most of these are also the subject of negotiation with the MILF. So we think that uh, through the work of the Transition Commission, we have several members there who, are, who come from uh, uh, the islands where the MNLF has traditionally been stronger compared to the MILF. Then they can, uh, through, through these members, they will be able to channel all of these uh, uh, concerns that they have. Uh, so that in the end you have a, a basic law, a more basic law that uh, really reflects the concerns and interests of uh, all the different stakeholders in the region. So you see it co all coming together when the when the basic law is crafted. Uh, all the aspirations should uh, of the different groups uh, that are that can be accommodated within the present constitution can be put into the Bangsamoro basic law.